learn about vectors, okay? You're going to beat the... Yeah, uh, I did. Okay. You didn't record that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, great. Vectors. Uh, man, I'm... Now, if you've, if you've had me for AP Physics, you've had a lot of experience with vectors, so this is all going to seem very easy to you, and, and I'm ha thankful for that. If you have not had me for AP Physics, and, and you've never seen a vector before, you know, it'll be a little bit harder for you, but that's okay. Here's what a vector is. A vector, I'm going to just define it, what it is. I'm going to kind of give you the, the short version of the lesson today, I think. Uh, uh, vectors, it's a line segment with direction. That's it. It's a line segment that has direction. A vector looks like this. Boop. There's a vector. And so what a vector has is the initial point, the starting point, and it has a terminal point or the ending point. This vector may look like a ray. Remember when you were in geometry, you learned about rays? But this isn't a ray, because a ray goes on forever and ever, and a vector doesn't. A vector starts here and ends there. In order for you to understand what a vector is, you need to understand what vector quantities are. So I'm going to do this. And again, people who had me last year are, are, are going to be aware of this. So you know, you can just turn your brains off, I guess. But there's essentially two types of quantities. There's vector quantities and scalar quantities. Vector quantities have direction and magnitude. Scalar quantities only have magnitude. Let me give you an example. Volume. The volume of that fluid is one liter. Tell me. Is volume a vector quantity or a scalar quantity? Scalar. It's a scalar, right? Because there's no particular direction to volume. But what if I said I'm exerting a force on Leilani? Is force a vector? Yes. Absolutely. Because what I always say, it depends upon what direction I'm exerting the force. If I'm directing the force away from me, I'm pushing her away in anger. But if I'm directing the force towards me, I'm hugging her because she's so nice. You see what I mean? So force is a vector quantity, all right? And so that's what we can always, you can always classify quantities, any measurable quantity, into either vector or scalar. You know, tell me, velocity, is that a vector quantity or scalar? Vector. Yeah, vector, because we define velocity as having a direction. Okay, whereas what's the scalar version of velocity? What's, what's velocity where we don't care about the direction? Speed. Yeah, speed. So what happens is if someone asks me if I'm on the 15 freeway and they ask me what's your speed, I'll say 80 miles an hour. But if they ask what's my velocity, well now it matters what direction I'm going, right? If I'm on the 15 freeway, if I'm going north, I'm going to gamble in Las Vegas, but if I'm going south, I'm going to do some illegal activity in Tijuana, right? And, and my direction matters. So velocity is a vector. I'm on the 15 going 80s miles an hour north, because I want to gamble. I want to lose every penny I have gambling, because it's so much fun. Okay, great. So vector quantities, scalar quantities. So if I had a car and the car was going 80 miles an hour, I might actually show on a piece of paper, there's my car going 80 miles an hour north. Well, what if there was a car right next to me that was only going 40 miles an hour? Well, I would draw it like this. I would, you know, to the best of my ability, have my 40 mile an hour vector be half as long as my 80 mile an hour vector. Because I want to show the world both these cars are traveling north, but this guy's going twice as fast. So I made his vector twice as long. Yes? So could the vector, like the line, be kind of similar to, to its like speed or its rate? Uh, yeah. Uh, Wait, wait, well, the, the length of the magnitude of the vector, the length of the line, is the speed. Okay. And then the arrow is providing us the direction. Okay. 
So yeah, so generally, and, and thank you for anticipating that, generally the length of the vector is symbolizing the magnitude of the quantity. You know, that is what the, what the number associated with the quantity is. You know, I, I could be exerting 100 newtons of force, and so I would make a vector that would symbolize 100 newtons. And if someone next to me was exerting 50 newtons of force in the opposite direction, their little vector would be half as long, you know. So, and, and the length of the vector symbolizes what the magnitude of the quantity is. Good. Okay, great. Uh, so that's it. That's my definition. Now, vectors can be written in component form. Let me see here, just one second. Which one are we writing them? Up in, on top of each other or side to side? Vectors? What? Vectors? Yeah. On top of each other or side to side? Yeah. I don't understand. Never mind. Okay. Okay, well, hey, here we go. Uh, 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 suppose uh, the initial point is 1 comma 2 and the terminal point is uh, 3 comma 6. Get, uh, let's, 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 let's just graph, let's graph this here. Let's just graph this. So I'm giving you a vector, and the initial point, which I'm going to call P, is 1, 2, and the terminal point, which I'm going to call Q, which I'm going to call Q, is 3, 6. Okay? So let's go for it. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? So 1, 2 is P. And the 3 comma 6 is Q, and this is my vector. Okay? Well, I'm going to totally give you the short version. Mm. We like to put our vectors in standard form. In standard form means the initial point is on the origin. So we like standard form. And if a vector is in standard form, that means the origin is on, I'm sorry, the initial point is on the origin. Okay. So I'm actually going to move this point down 2 and over 1, and move this point down 2 and over 1, and say that this vector is the same as that vector. And we like the vector to be at the origin, because now we can use the coordinates of the end point to be able to draw the vector. You'll notice the coordinates of the end point are 2 comma 4, right? And so this vector v, I can actually express this vector v in a component form, which is the coordinates of the terminal point given that the initial point is at the origin. It always ends up being the coordinates of the terminal point when the initial point is at the origin. That is, when your vector is in standard position, then the terminal point is how we name the vector. And so that vector v I'm going to name it as 2 comma 4. And our book, in order to tell the world, hey, this isn't just the coordinates of a point, this is actually the terminal point of a vector, they have you put it in these little angle braces. Other books actually don't do it that way, but this book does. Tell me, vector PQ, okay, 
is there some way I could have manipulated these numbers so that I could have gotten what the component form of uh, vector PQ is? is subtract yeah, you guys okay? Just subtract them. Vector PQ, all you have to do is subtract the terminal point minus the initial point. Okay, in this case, vector PQ in component form ends up being a 6 minus 2, oops, I'm so sorry, ends up being 3 minus 1 comma 6 minus 2, which gets me 2 comma 4. I'm just, boy, I'm just going randomly. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm really, I'm, I've so departed from my notes. So here's another fact about vectors. Vectors are useful to us because they have magnitude and direction. But you'll notice I took this vector and changed its position and thought nothing of it to give it a new name. And that's because one of the other attributes of a vector is you, they have no particular position. As long as you maintain their magnitude and direction, I can put that vector anywhere and it's the same vector because we don't need a vector to have a particular position. So if I'm exerting a force, or, on, or let's say I'm going in a particular direction and I want to show it on a piece of paper, I can put that vector anywhere as long as I have the correct uh, magnitude and, and direction. So I just want to say line segment with direction, no particular position. So you can put that vector anywhere and, and work with it. And you're going to see that come into play when we start adding vectors. Yes? Sure. There's another thing I want to make sure you understand. This idea of component form, we're going to learn uh, uh, tomorrow, no, no, uh, Wednesday, that a vector, any vector I draw, is actually the sum of a vector that's horizontal and a vector that's vertical. And these two vectors, which this is the sum of, and you're going to learn this more later this period, but I just want to let you know, this blue vector equals the sum of the green vectors because if some dude walked from here to there and then walked from there to there, they'd start at the initial point and end at the ending point. Yes, Leilani? Yes. Then these two vectors are called the components. This vector is the x component, and this vector is the y component. And so that's why expressing the vector as 2 comma 4 is called component form, because you're telling the world, hey, this is the x component and that's the y component. To get from your initial point to your terminal point, you go 2 to the right and 4 up, and, and you're there at the terminal point, which means it's the sum of these two vectors. And I'm going to talk about that momentarily. Um, let's, let's uh, okay, let me give you one problem to do. And then I'm going to talk about uh, magnitude and uh, scalar multiplication. And then we'll add, get the unit vector, then we'll add graphically and add them in component form. It's kind of fun. OK, so here we go. Let's say I told you that uh, P was negative 1, 4, and Q was uh, a 3, 2. Um, I'd like you, everyone to please get me vector PQ in component form. And remember, it's just the end point, terminal point minus the initial point. you've got uh, 3 minus negative 1, which is 4, and 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. How many people got 4 comma negative 2? Yay. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, you could have discovered this if you graphed it. This is negative 1 comma 4. That's P. And this is 3 comma 2. That's Q. And so your vector starts at P and ends at Q. So there's your vector, but if I want to put my vector in standard position, then I end up with uh, 
with the end point being at four comma, four comma negative two. I end up with the end point being there. This would be the same vector as that one, but in standard position. All right, and again, this vector has an x component that's four long and a y component that's negative two, hence the components are four comma negative two. Okay, let's go ahead and get the magnitude of the vector. Tell me, getting the magnitude of the vector means getting the length. So what special theorem named after some ancient Greek guy are you going to use? <laughs> yeah, that's it, Pythagorean theorem. So I just want to tell you, generally, generally for vector a comma b, if, if that equals v, if I want to, if I say I've got a vector a comma b, which is my vector v, then the magnitude magnitude of V, which we show with absolute value symbol. Some textbooks, I think Mrs. Lofgren's textbook, uh, those of you who had Mrs. Lofgren last year, you actually had a unit on vectors. Do, do you guys remember that? Yes. Okay, so, so everyone who had Mrs. Lofgren last year, this should be incredibly old news for you guys. But if you're the type of person who didn't have Mrs. Lofgren last year and never had physics with me, which would mean Kylie, is there anyone else here who neither had physics with me nor Mrs. Lofgren? Okay, so this is for you guys. This is all for you. Okay. So last year in Mrs. Lofgren's class, you learned that it had like double uh, uh, absolute value symbols because some books like that. But in this class, I'm just going to use single uh, you know, absolute value symbols, and, and that's going to end up being the square root of a squared plus b squared. That is, I'm just going to do Pythagorean theorem. So hey, you know, if, if v equals, uh, I'm just, I'm not going to even spend any time, uh, then the magnitude of v equals what? What's the magnitude of v? Five. How many of you are getting five? Yeah, okay, great. It's that simple. Just do Pythagorean theorem. Great. Also, scalar multiplication. When it's scalar multiplication, all they're doing is multiplying a vector by a number. So what if I wanted 3 times v? If I wanted 3 times v, then here's what I'm doing. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if this is v, here's 3, 4. If that's v, then if I want 3 times v, all I'm saying is, OK, well, I'm going to have uh, three of these vectors end to end. I want a vector that points in the same direction as v, but is 3 times longer. And so 3v would be 3 times 3 comma 4, which is equal to 9 comma 16. Right? And so the magnitude of v, the magnitude of v, is going to be the square root of 9 squared plus 16 squared, which ends up being, uh, wait, shoot, 12. Yeah, it should be 15. The, the, the magnitude of 3v is going to be the magnitude of 9 comma 12, which ends up being 15, or, or 3 times 5. Yeah. So, so that's it with scalar it, It's pretty much what you would expect. You know, there's no surprises here. There's, there's another thing I want to talk about, and that's the unit vector. And then I'm going to give you a problem where you get to get magnitude and then unit vector. Unit vector. Let's say v is 3 comma 4. OK? The unit vector. There's two ways to show a unit vector. One way is with bold face type. So you would do it like this. Here's my unit vector. But that's very difficult for me on a whiteboard to show you a unit vector with bold face type. So the way a lot of books use, do unit vectors is to put a little carrot type thing on top of it. 
and that's to show the world, hey, this is a unit vector. Now, our textbook does not use this nomenclature. Our textbook makes it boldface, which I find very inconvenient as a teacher. So I'm going to do this. And the unit vector has a magnitude of 1. The way, shoot man, the way I'm going to get a vector to have a magnitude of 1 is to just take the vector and divide by its magnitude. That is, a unit vector is going to be v divided by the magnitude of v. Let me give you an example. I've got v, which is 3 comma 4, and I've got the magnitude of v, which is 5. Well, this is an example of scalar multiplication. I'm multiplying each component by 1 fifth. Dividing by 5 is multiplying by 1 fifth. So this is the vector. 3 fifths comma 4 fifths. And do you see, if I do Pythagorean theorem, 9 20 fifths plus 16 20 fifths, I get 1. So I've got a vector whose magnitude is 1, but which points in the same direction as 3 comma 4. That is, if this is V, then I've got this guy here, which would be the unit vector. It points in the same direction, but it's 3 fifths comma 4 fifths. I give you guys one? Here's a, I'm going to have a vector called A, and vector A is going to be 5 comma negative 12. That's my vector A. I'd like everyone here to please get me what 2A is equal to. Please get me the magnitude of A, and then get me an expression for the unit vector A. Good luck. I'll give you a minute. Here we go. Did you guys get 10, negative 24 for 2a? Yay. The magnitude of a, when you do 5 and 12, did you guys get 13? You should recognize that as a Pythagorean triple. Yes. 25 plus 144 uh, gets you 169, and radical 169 is 13. And so what's, the, uh, what's this guy going to be? What's my unit vector a going to be? Yeah, 5 thirteens comma negative 12 thirteens. Yeah, this is a vector that points in the same direction as A, but has a length of 1. All right, hey, any questions or problems on that? Okay, then the last thing is I need to make sure you know how to add vectors, how to add them graphically. Adding vectors, okay. Suppose there's a box, and I'm pushing on the box, and I'm pushing with 100 newtons of force. And let's say I've got my friend, maybe it's my daughter. Yes, we'll make it my daughter. My daughter's pushing as well, and she's pushing with 20 newtons of force, okay? I did not make a good drawing because I need my 20 newton force to be one-fifth of my 100 newton force. There we go, that's a little better. Will they talk to you down on the AP physics? Yes, on the AP physics they will. Oh. AP calculus, not so much. But on AP physics, they totally do. 
Yeah, you got to really watch your lengths of vectors or they read. Okay, so here's my question to you. What's the total force being exerted on this box? 120, right? Because she and I are I'm exerting 100, she's exerting 20, 120. But let me ask you another question. What if here's the box and I'm exerting 100 newtons this way, but my daughter is exerting 20 newtons this way? Okay? So she's exerting 20 newtons that way. Are we exerting 120 newtons now? No. Yeah, no way, right? We only get to have our forces add if we're exerting our forces in the same direction. If I'm exerting, if she's exerting her force this way and I'm exerting my force that way, then we're not exerting a total of 120. And, and certainly, you know that's true if, if we're doing this. If I'm here exerting 100 newtons, and, and my cute little daughter is over here exerting 20 newtons, then for sure it's not 120, right? In this scenario, it's 80. So I hope it makes sense that the only time the forces add is specifically for exerting our forces in the same direction. Okay, you guys. Uh, man. Um, okay, well, say bye-bye.